All right, well, um, I've got a little, a little clip that we could start our uh, word time with this morning. Hello? I need your help! Clap on! Clap on! Clap on! Clap on! Clap on! Figures! Well, hello there, Bruce Almighty. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, is it, son? This God business. They're all out of control. It's mayhem. I, I don't know what to do. Well, you're right on time. Seven o'clock. Seventh at seven. Alrighty then. There we are. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. No matter how filthy something gets, you can always clean it right up. There were so many. I just gave them all what they wanted. Yeah. But since when does anyone have a clue about what they want? So do I do? Parting your soup is not a miracle, Bruce. It's a magic trick. A single mom who's working two jobs and still finds time to take her kid to soccer practice, that's a miracle. A teenager who says no to drugs and yes to an education, that's a miracle. People want me to do everything for them when what they don't realize is they have the power. You want to see a miracle, son? Be the miracle. Wait, are you leaving? Yeah, I figure you can handle things now. But what if I need you? What if I have questions? <laughs> That's your problem, Bruce. That's everybody's problem. You keep looking up. We're going to read about the ascension of Jesus in the book of Acts. First chapter, verses 1 through 11. This is the good Dr. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, writing another book to his friend. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father, that he's promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in the few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for not only coming, dying, and coming back to life for us, but thank you for ascending to the right hand of the Father and promising that you will bring us into that same glory. Lord, as we hear and appreciate and try to comprehend this story this morning, we ask for your guidance of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This um, 
video clip from Bruce Almighty. You know, this was such a great movie. I don't know. How many of you have seen this movie in the past? Yeah. It's, it's getting kind of old. I can't believe it's like, you know, this was from the 80s, and it just seems like ages ago. But um, what a great, what a great picture of the idea of looking up. You know, in the story from the scripture this morning, we, we hear the disciples trying to figure out what's the plan, Jesus. They want to know. They want to know what he's going to do. Is this the, are you going to do this now? Are you going to make Israel great again? Are you going to restore us to power? Are you going to give us the military might to beat these Romans? And he said, wait, no, no. It's not for you to know about what's going to happen. He said, I've been telling you about the kingdom of God this whole time I've been with you. They want an answer. And then I, you know, you get this picture of them as, as they're all standing there and suddenly Jesus is raised up, just floating up in the sky. Can you imagine? And the guys are all just standing there looking up, just watching him go. And all of a sudden these two angels just kind of come up behind them and they're just, you know, whenever somebody's looking up, you can't help but look up with them too. So the angels probably just kind of sidled up next to him and were like, hey, what you looking at? Why are you looking up there? Why are you looking up there? He's not there. It's just kind of like the same message they got when they went to the tomb that morning. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's saying, why are you looking for Jesus in glory in the clouds now? He's, he's where he needs to be. He's going to come back again. Get busy. Get busy. I loved how God, in the form of Morgan Freeman, I love it. I, I really picture Morgan Freeman's voice as God's voice when I hear God sometimes saying, you know, that's kind of the problem, is that y'all are always looking up. You know, we want people to do things for us. We want God. You know, I, at the beginning, he's shaking that ladder. You know, clap on, clap off. That's the way that he had turned, God had turned the lights off in a previous scene. He walked up to the ladder, and he just went like this, clap off. So he's like shaking this ladder, like, come on. And I said when we were looking at the clip a little earlier, have you ever felt that way? Have you ever done that? Have you ever just been shaking the ladder and just saying, come on, God, I need you. Why aren't you answering me? I love that scene. It's so telling of the way we are sometimes when we want an answer and we want to know and we want it now. We look up. And looking up isn't necessarily all bad. I'm going to talk about that. But looking up in the way of, of just expecting that God is going to do it all, we're missing the boat. See, when we look up to the skies all the time, we're missing what's going on around us here, and we're expecting God to fix problems that we've created ourselves, whether it's through things that we've done intentionally or, or just through the sinfulness of the world around us. You want a miracle, Bruce? Be the miracle, he said. Because we have been given the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he left the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about it next week. It's going to be Pentecost. So we're going to be Pentecostal next week, people. We're going to talk about how, what it meant to be given the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is living in us and empowering us to do amazing things for the kingdom of God. But, you know, sometimes we want our pastor to do it. We want our boss to do it. We want our principal to do it. We want our teachers to do it. We want our president to do it, our Congress. We're always looking up. We're pointing up and looking up and expecting that somehow this is, you're supposed to do this. And really, we have all been given the power to do it. This is Ascension Sunday. This is when we celebrate. Uh, the Day of Ascension was actually Thursday and co coincided with the National Day of Prayer Go figure. But that this day represents the completion of what Jesus' mission was on the earth. Now he's taken it up to heaven and shown us that this is where we're going to go as well. When we follow him, believe in him, trust in him, give our lives to him, and do what he told us to do. That's the tricky part. I read in one of my studies this week as I was uh, preparing was that um, this guy wrote... Uh, that the distance bridged in this movement of resurrection to exaltation isn't measured in the number of miles from earth to heaven, whatever that is, but it's measured in the amount of evil and destruction that separates us from God. He says it's not the force of gravity that must be overcome, but the forces of sin and death and hell 
and annihilation, the forces of violence, the things we do to each other. That's what we have to overcome. That's what this rising means. So uh, when we look up, it's okay. It's okay to look up when we're looking up to Jesus. When we're looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And we need to look up. We need to look at Jesus who is up. He is high and lifted up. And we need to look up what he said to us. You know? Look up his words in the New Testament. We need to look up and we need to look to him absolutely to know what his will is for our lives. But we can't get stuck just sitting here waiting for him to come back in the by and by when everything's going to be great and we all get to go to heaven. We're here, and we've got to do what he's called us to do here on this earth in this time. We, do, we need to acknowledge that God is God. We need to acknowledge that we are not God, amen, and that we need God. We are not God, but we do need God, so we need to look up, and we need to look to the scripture, and we need to absorb that ourselves. I've told you all this time that I've been with you that just because I say something on Sunday morning does not mean you need to believe it. I mean, I hope you do. I hope you know that I'm sincere and that I'm, I, I'm truthful as much as I can be, but you need to look up what I'm talking about. You need to read this stuff yourself and you need to study so you know the truth. I didn't make this up. This word is for you, all of you. So look up and look it up and look in. Okay, we all need to look inward because, you know, we're going to sing this song, He Lives, as our closing song today. And one of the lines in there says, He lives, I know He lives, He lives within my heart. Right? We say that. So what does it mean to have Him live inside of our hearts? When we look up and we know and we trust and we believe the words He tells us, then we look inside and we see, is Jesus really there? Are we giving Him the space inside of our lives? I heard a story the other day where somebody said, you know, that Jesus lives inside of us, and the, and the kid came up. Was it you that did this message, Kim? I can't remember where I heard it. But the kid came up later and said, well, does Jesus really live inside of us? And the mom said, well, yes, honey. And she said, but, but Jesus is, 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 is so big. If he lives inside of it, us, wouldn't, wouldn't he stretch us? <laughs> and the mom says, yeah, he sure would. <laughs> if he lives inside of us, he would stretch you. He does stretch us. It hurts sometimes. But we have to look within. And lastly, we have to look around. If you want to see a miracle, Bruce, be the miracle. We need to look around and see, first of all, what needs to be done in the kingdom of God here on earth. How do we make the kingdom come? How do we make the mercy and the love and the justice that God is, how do we make it real on, on this earth and around us? That's our job, to make the kingdom come. We have to help. And also to look around and see where God's already working. You know, God is already doing a mighty work, and he's making everything new in ways and in places and in people all around us, and, and we're ignoring it sometimes because it's not right here in our church walls. You know, I'm sorry, church, but, but, but church goes on outside too. And these beautiful stained glass windows, you know, I've, I thought about it too. When, we, when we're in here and the sun is streaming in, it's, it, they're beautiful. We look at them and we, we just see all the stories of the scriptures. And we see the, the, leg, the legacy that have been, has been left by the people who made these windows and who, who, who put them there. But somebody said to me once, you know, we should leave the lights on inside the church so that the people going by can see the lights from the outside. They can see the beautiful windows. I thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We need to be shining from the inside out so the world can see Jesus. And it's not just us appreciating it on Sunday mornings. It's kind of a metaphor for, for our lives and what we need to do. We need to look up, we need to look in, and we need to look around. And, and this is what Jesus said when he left all of those disciples staring off into the sky. I will be with you until the end of the age, he said. But you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in a whole world. It wasn't just for them, it's for us too. That's our commission. The great commission and the great commandment makes it the great commitment when you blend those two together. And it is a great commitment. I hope you're in on it with me. Let's pray. 
Father God, thank you that you have set your son to be born humbly in a manger, laid in a feeding trough of animals, Lord, to live a life that was pure and good, and to die a death that was horrible for us, to be buried dark in a tomb for three days, and to rise again, and to rise into the heavens, to ascend, to sit at your right hand, Father God, until he calls us all back. Help us to be faithful here. Help us to be the miracle. Help us to do the task that you have called us to do here in this church, in this community, in this country, and in the world. We ask in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we have a chance to continue our worship with our prayers and praises this morning. Um, as I said, we're, we're meeting on Thursday mornings here, if you're able. I know for you guys that work, it's, it's not a good time, but... Um, but we're here at 9 o'clock, Thursday mornings, and if you want to come in the sanctuary and, and, and share prayer with us, we would love to have you. Um, I want to ask you to keep George Moore uh, and his family in your prayers as we had the funeral for his sister Rhonda uh, on Friday. Uh, Rhonda passed away. She was only 56. Um, she was George's sister, and she had had Down syndrome. Um, so she had a special life and a special uh, special memories from her family that were just amazing and touching. So just keep them in your prayers as they walk this journey without her, um, and uh, they're all grieving. I also want to lift up General Conference, as I said. The United Methodist Church meets every four years. They call it every quadrennium, just to be fancy. But uh, they, they go over um, the rules and the book of discipline that we have, and and uh, they look at where the church is and where it's going and, and um, if there are any things that needed, need to be changed. So there are some things that they're really wrestling with and they're going to uh, deal with at this conference that are um, uh, pretty serious. So they need a lot of wisdom uh, and they need a lot of prayer as they go into this. So they're going to meet from the 10th of May until the 17th, I want to say, or the, um, or the 20th. Um, so if we could be in prayer for that, um, that would be helpful. And um, I want to, again, call our attention to the names in here this morning. And um, I want to uh, specifically ask if, if anyone needs to be prayed over and, and, and anointed and, and, uh, for healing this morning. And, and Bree, I know you've been having a hard time, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would love to pray for you if you, if you want to come up and anyone else that wants to come up. Uh, and I want to just anoint you with the oil that we've prayed over and has been here for the four years since I've been here, and all your prayers are just infused in it, and I just want that to be something that is available to whoever needs it and wants it, and it's, it's, it's the power of prayer and healing, and, and we want to claim it this morning. So if you want to come up, Bree, we're going to pray for Bree. Who else wants to be anointed and, uh, and prayed for this morning? Bree's been having a hard time, and, 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 and she's going through this thing where, where the doctors aren't, aren't quite sure, and that's about the worst, worst place to be. It's, it's a type of a transition place that we, we can't even imagine. So we, we want to just pray for Bree, and we want to pray for healing. We want to pray for the doctors, and, and we want to pray for freedom from pain. All right? And we want you to be well. Jesus wants you to be well. Bree, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I anoint you with this oil as a symbol of the prayers and the concerns of this congregation for you and for your health. Lord, we're asking for healing for Bree right now, Lord. She's been in a, in a time of transition with this uh, illness, and we are just claiming that she is going to have some freedom from this soon, Lord God, that your timing is, is your timing, and we trust you, Lord, but we are just asking for, for healing for her. We're asking for freedom from pain. We're asking for, for comfort in knowing that um, she is going to be okay and to not suffer the, the, the bleakness and depression that sometimes comes with, with not knowing, Lord God. So we just pray your Holy Spirit's presence with her to heal, pre protect, and comfort her and her whole family as they care for her in this process. Lord, we ask in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hang in there. Oh, goodness. All right, Raza's son Greg might lose his leg as well as having a spot on his kidney that we're going to pray for. Okay, so the baby's home? She can't what? No visitors for three months, but she's home. She was a preemie. Uh, her her great-granddaughter, Afton, uh, is home from the hospital, praise God. So she got to that weight that they let them go home. So no visitors. Even you? 
Even family? Oh, man, that's hard. Okay, we'll pray for you, your brother Philip, and his struggle with addiction. Addiction is, um, is a monster sometimes, and we need freedom. It's good to see Tom and Diane Williams with us this morning. I know we've got them on our list and continue to pray for Tom every day to have strength. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you have offered us the opportunity to connect with you in a way that is a miracle through our prayers and our praises. Lord, as we've prayed this morning for Bree and for all of those names that we've lifted up, we just know and trust that you are here, you are real, your comfort in our times of grief your comfort and protection in our times of transition and unknowing. Lord, we trust you. And we trust you to your tender care, all of these on our list this morning. Those that are having marital problems, those that are having financial problems, those that are suffering like Philip with addictions, Lord, that they would be freed from that in the way that only you can provide freedom. For all of those in our congregation that need healing of their physical bodies, we lift up specifically Penny to you this morning and Bree and Jim as he waits for his kidney. Lord, we pray for this country. We pray that we can be an example. As we prayed on Thursday in the National Day of Prayer, Lord, we, we all gathered together to ask that you would bless America but not with just prosperity and, and things the way we want them, Lord, but to have your will and your way, that we would turn back to you from the very center of our beings and that the trickle effect from that would change the world, make us people of grace and love and mercy and healing. And Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here in the freedom that we have to worship you today with all of our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. And we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.